it's not that capitalism isn't working. It's that we don't have capitalism, and so it can't work. We have socialism, right? In capitalism, it is a market-based economy. And what it means is that the market sets prices and allocates resources. So everything is determined by all the buyers and sellers, the savers and the borrowers, the producers and the consumers. Everybody gets together in a marketplace, and we discover the price based on all the various supply and demand factors, right? And we know that that works. We know what doesn't work is central planning. See, that's the opposite of a market-based economy. In a market-based economy, nobody tries to plan anything. It just happens automatically based on all the various uh, uh, you know, participants in the market interacting voluntary for their mutual benefit, right? But in a command economy, you get a group of people who get together and think they know better. Hey, we don't just want to leave everything up to chance. We're going to decide who produces what, who consumes what, what the price is going to be for that, what the price is going to be for this, right? That's a centrally planned economy. And it never works. It's always a disaster. Yet that is exactly what we have now. We have a centrally planned economy masquerading as a free economy. And that's why you have all these problems. That's why you have all this inequality. I mean, think about it. You've got Congress micromanaging industry through the tax code and through the regulatory code. They pick winners and losers. They decide who gets a subsidy and who pays the tax, right? And they have all kinds of regulations that say, this is the price that you could pay for that, right? There's a minimum wage law, you know, uh, all kinds of mandates, all kinds of stuff that, 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 you know, that screws up the market. And then they have, they grant licenses to some companies to have monopolies. They inhibit competition. You know, they have all kinds of barriers to entry. They have all kinds of regulatory uh, burdens that come up the works and that force businesses to devote scarce resources just to keeping the regulators off their back. And so they become uncompetitive, right? But a lot of it is based on what the government thinks. They give you a subsidy for buying a house. Uh, they give you a subsidy to go to college, right? So they're distorting decisions that would normally be made. You know, because in the absence of some kind of government incentive, there may be a lot of people who are going to college who wouldn't go. Maybe there are a lot of people who buy houses just to get the deduction off their income tax, right? If they didn't have that, maybe they'd make a better decision, a different decision. So with the government, you know, basically trying to, you know, influence all the decisions, what that really is called is central planning. And the same thing at the Fed. The, central, the Federal Reserve plans the, the economy. They decide what, what they think the money supply should be. Why should the Fed decide what the money supply should be? And then they decide what interest rates should be. They fix the price of money. The single most important price in a market economy is the price of money because money is half of every transaction. And instead of letting the market set interest rates, they price fix it. So we have central banking, you know, central planning disguised as central banking. And of course, they are creating problems, huge problems. I mean, think about all of the problems that led to the 2008 financial crisis, right? That was the consequence of the Fed keeping interest rates too low for too long, really between 2002 and, and 2007, where for about a year and a half, they were at 1%. And then for, you know, a few years, they were, you know, still low. They weren't as low as one. They were one and a half, two, stuff like that. But the Fed kept interest rates too low for too long. And during that time period, lots of mistakes were made. And the culmination of those bad mistakes was 2008. Now, think about this, right? <laughs> what Yellen and Bernanke have done is off the charts compared to what uh, Greenspan did. I mean, that was child's play compared to what these guys have done, right? You're talking six years of zero, not just one for a while and then one and a half, two. You're talking zero. And on top of that, three rounds of quantitative easing, blowing out the balance sheet, Fed balance sheet at four and a half trillion. So the mistakes that we've made this time around dwarf the ones that we made last time. The economy is so much more screwed up now than it was, which means the end game, the resolution, the culmination of that, the bursting of this enormous bubble is going to be so much worse than it was last time around. Is it any wonder that Janet Yellen doesn't want to pop it? That she doesn't want to put a pin anywhere near that bubble when it comes to raising interest rates? But it's going to burst on its own anyway. I mean, there's no way that they can defy this. I hear people say, you know, oh, we don't know how this experiment's going to end, you know. Of course we do. It's going to end in ruin. I mean, history is littered with the ashes of nations that have fallen because they did what we're doing now. So it's not that we don't know how it's going to end. We just don't want to admit how it's going to end because we don't like the ending. 
right? We're going to hope for some kind of miracle, even though there is no precedent for that. 